Okay, so before we start this video, if you do do too, like me, I'm just gonna say from the very beginning that I do not like this subject at all. It's a really boring subject and I heavily regret taking it, but it is what it is. I've taken it and I'd like to share a few tips with you guys in how you can get a grade 9 in GCSE Design Technology. So if you didn't know, I do DT at Excel and more specifically i do the timber section so all the stuff about wooden things and i'm going to split this video into two parts we've got the coursework and we've got the theory i'll start off with the theory and then we'll go over the coursework and uh, exactly what you can do in that to achieve a high grade but yeah so let's just get straight onto it in dt the theory is really really content heavy uh, there's a lot of information that you need to know for the exam there's one dt exam and then you've got the non-examined assessment that will move on to later in the video so for DT at least I find that there's a lot of information that you need to learn because you need to know all the different types of timbers and you need to know what's good about them what's bad about them and how you can use them and examples of them and stuff like that and it's really difficult to know all of that and I personally have a lot of trouble with trying to understand everything because there's just so much information let me just get the textbook um, if you like look at all the different stuff that you need to learn for the theory there is a lot there's a lot how would you go about learning all this information well the best way i do it is through flashcards and i use a software called remno if you don't know what that is um it's in the card in the corner and yeah remno for me is really good because i can just simply write uh this specific word advantages disadvantages what it's used for and i've done that in such a way that i can easily memorize everything and what i've actually started doing for my most recent rem notes is that I've kind of um, added like an image on Google Drawing. What I'd do is I'd like edit it and I'd put like these images to make it much more friendly for me. And for me, I can then associate the like thing with the image. So for example, here's one of oak and you can see I've got like this um, image for it with like this piece of oak and it's got big muscles because I'm trying to show it strong. So whenever I'm thinking about, okay, what's the advantages of oak? I can think of that image in my head and then I can link it. I can just memorize it so easily because I have the images to work off of and for me it works really well and I highly recommend you do so as well if you don't want to do online flashcards you can do physical ones as well I have friends who do that but yeah you're not going to be able to get through the theory by just reading the textbook it's not going to work out there's a lot of information that you need to know and the best way to do it is through flashcards you can use Quizlet as well because it's really good and yeah so practice questions work really good but what I think I found about DT compared to other subjects is it's really limited on the past papers and the practice questions so one website that I've found which has been probably the only website I found for revision for the GCSE DT specifically I mean you've got Seneca you've got BBC Bite Size you've got Quizlet and stuff but you also have this like DT specific website called Technology Student it's got a lot of information there um, it's not the best looking website by far but uh, I think it's really nice for actually understanding everything I have my end of year one here um, this I did back in year 10 and the end of years so basically mocks as well and let's just look at it because this is the 2020 paper they just casually threw at us and it is the most obnoxious thing to ever exist like at the start it doesn't start off that hard so I'd say the first couple of questions the best way you could get marks like this is by firstly memorizing all the different like advantages and disadvantages and also you can really just work it out like through common sense so for example if we look at this beach chopping board here you can clearly see that for a chopping board what do you need for it to have uh, one thing I said was doesn't splinter because you're having food on it uh, you don't want splinters to go into your food I just know that from beforehand from this nice lovely image right here and another thing you could say is that it's strong I mean you need a chopping board to be strong uh, just stuff like that it's really important to be able to like this wool socks one over here I completely guessed the word breathable and I got the mark so yeah it's all about trying to use uh, an element of guesswork and trying to get the marks because I feel like the DT theory is a really like wobbly exam I do not like it and um, I'm like heavily relying on my coursework to carry me through this because the theory exam is so difficult for the amount of time they give you to do it in 
lessons. The theory for us was really badly taught. I just didn't understand much about it because like the only revision resources we really have is this textbook. I can't run, really find anything else. Um, I have a friend who has like some textbook as well, um, some other textbook. I forgot the name of it, but if I manage to find it, it looks like this. Maybe buy that if you like it. It's a much more less dense with information because this textbook right here, this one, I actually hate it so much. It's got so much useless information. It's actually just stupid. Another really important thing is that we have been given advanced information for DT and they've given us specific chapters that we should look over. So make sure you know those chapters inside out properly. Properly learn those chapters. Look at them again and again because they're probably going to be the juicy mark questions, the high markers. You're probably going to get a massive nine marker on one of those topics there. So really look over it. My guess is that the big nine marker, I think it's a nine marker at the very end. Um, I feel like that's going to be about manufactured boards because it says something about manufactured boards and you have to really know a lot about them and I'm just guessing you're not really going to need to know much about them anywhere else apart from the nine marker but that's a complete guess from me so really look over them and understand exactly what you can say you need to be good at maths somewhat to actually do well in your theory as well um, I feel like maths isn't too much of a problem with me but if it is a problem with you make sure you actually revise your maths as well because when you're revising your maths you're technically revising DT in a small percentage way as well whenever it asks about the the specific like what you have to add to a specific product uh, I always like having a beach thing in there because beach doesn't splinter which is really good for uh, something that you have to hold and stuff because uh, if you if you need to hold a certain wood then you might want to actually make sure it doesn't splinter but if you have any other sort of wood you can coat it with like a varnish or something and it will do the same job or paint or whatever my main tips are that you need to firstly have some sort of system to learn all the information so the way I do it is flashcards but you can always do it in some sort of other way you can blurt it I can just note down everything uh, I remember about timbers or everything I remember about different finishes for example I'm just it's just anything blurting works really well as well for a topic like DT the main reason I hate DT so much is because of the coursework the coursework is actually obnoxious I knew that I was going to be putting a lot of work into my DT portfolio but I didn't know I was going to be doing this much work um, I remember we got set four initial ideas to do over the summer holidays and it was actually the most painful thing ever. A lot of people in my class uh, only managed to do them at the very end of their holidays and managed to stress themselves out and um, it didn't go well for them. I actually gave myself a week to do each one so it didn't go as badly for me but it was still really annoying. I didn't want to do it and um, what I suggest for coursework is to put more time and effort towards it than your theory because I feel like it's much easier to get a higher mark in coursework than it is in the theory. The only difficult part is that you have to put in a lot of hard work but once you put in the work you should be basically guaranteeing yourself the high marks because what you need to do is just go over everything um, see the way your teacher plans it and like lays it out and everything and make sure you include every single thing that is expected of you to as high of a standard as you possibly could so for example if you're doing initial ideas uh, make sure that you put everything you could possibly do so you've got some CAD in there great you've got some modeling in there that's even better just include all sorts of different types of ways to illustrate your design and just show that you know a variety of different techniques rather than just sticking with the same thing over and over again and also I suggest adding introductions and conclusions to everything it really helps and just stuff like that just make sure you don't spend too much time on laying out your portfolio and making it look nice because it doesn't matter nobody cares uh, the main part of it should be the writing don't waffle on for too much uh, one thing that a teacher says to us is to keep everything nice and concise and uh, I have friends who've written complete essays for their thing I just find it a bit inefficient in my opinion because you're trying to demonstrate your ideas in a nice and short way um, obviously it's not bad to write a lot but try and make sure everything is in bullet points rather than in like massive chunks of text if that makes sense and try and have images and stuff not like massive like stock images of just random old people or something that you find try and have um just images that could actually complement what you're talking about rather than you trying to fill up the page with images if that makes sense. Another thing I find really really useful is client feedback. You should put client feedback on anything you could possibly do like client feedback for your initial ideas, client feedback for your testing and evaluation, client feedback on your making, client feedback on everything. Client feedback is actually super super useful for the coursework itself. Go into as much detail as you can okay so you've mentioned your measurements 
uh, but have you mentioned how much you think it would cost? Have you mentioned how big it would be in real life? Have you mentioned stuff like that? Just try and um, give it like, make it look like an instruction manual for someone else. So when they look over it, they can clearly tell what's going on. And if they were to make it based on your design, they could easily do it. Don't just like leave some stuff out. If you don't know how to do something, ask your teacher. And yeah, really focus on trying to get the best mark possible for your coursework. Um, when they, uh, when your teachers mark the coursework in like mocks or something, I don't know if it's the same with you guys, but for our mocks, our teachers marked our coursework and um, you want to clearly see uh, how high you get. And if you're getting a good score, then you should be really happy with yourself. But if you're not getting as high as you want, try and look for what things might be going wrong and try and add more everywhere because it's really important. It's better to have more than less. Uh, just see, do I it, like go through every slide and say, say if you're satisfied with it and just like look at it and just think, have I written enough and have I've written what I need to do for this section according to the mark scheme. And that's all my tips for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.